Welcome back to Writing Done Right. We're gonna go ahead and introduce this video here outside because I already have the camera set up and we're gonna be on the computer the rest of the time. So today we're gonna talk about installing Sigil and Page Edit on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and there will be timestamps down below. Welcome back to Writing Done Right. I am Tom Morosky, an author and a technology consultant, and today we're going to talk about the free ebook editor Sigil with its companion Page Edit. Now, as I had mentioned previously, and we looked, I think we looked at Page Edit previously, I can't remember, but recently the Sigil group took the ability to edit the books in a what you see, what you get mode out of the Sigil application because it was actually very buggy and had a lot of problems with it. And I experienced some of these problems myself and I'm glad they kind of took this separate approach. But what they did is they took a what you see is what you get editor, set that as a separate, a separate editor and then gave you the ability to choose that editor or other editors that might come out to sync them together. We're going to show you how to install those on the three platforms, Mac, Linux, and Windows, and we're going to show you how to install PageEdit as well, and we're going to show you how to link those two together so you can get them using. Go ahead and consult with the timestamps down below for your particular operating system. All right, so here we are on Windows 10, and we are going to download Sigil and PageEdit and link them together over here. So we're just going to open up a web browser here. I'm just using the default Edge and head on over to the sigil-ebook.com slash get. You can search for the Sigil ebook and just hit the get button down here. And under the releases link right over here, we're just going to go ahead and open this guy up in a new tab. This is the download uh, page for the GitHub, which will have the executable applications. So you need to know if you have a old standard 32-bit system or a 64. Most people right now are gonna have a 64-bit system. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this guy here. So we'll just click on this guy and it should give us a download prompt and we're going to save it. Don't bother running it, just save it for now. So I just went back to the main Sigil ebook page again under your recent posts just keep an eye out over here so the page at 1.3 release so you want to scroll down to the bottom this guy here is the user guide we don't necessarily need that we do need the binaries and source codes from the github releases page so this one here is the page i couldn't find from the github page it, it's there somewhere i just didn't spot it once again 32 or 64 bit we want the 64 bit version we're going to save it it's going to download it, and it's probably going to yell at us again that we can't verify the, the publisher down here. So we'll wait for that and then tell it fine. Okay, so could not be verified, could not be verified. That's fine. We're just going to go ahead and leave that open there in case um, uh, we need to download those again because, you know, Windows is like, but, 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 and that's why I don't use Windows anymore. All right, so we're first going to install Sigil. Go ahead and run the Sigil application. It may yell at us again that it's an unverified publisher. Uh, you can install for only for you or for all users. It doesn't matter however your setup is. If you're sharing this computer with your family, maybe only you. If, you're, if it's your only computer, that's fine. You can uh, read through the terms, accept those terms. And we're just going to install it to the default. So program files, Sigil. We can create the desktop icon. We can associate ebook files with Sigil. These are ebook files. So let's just go ahead and do that. Why not? All right. And check if bundled VS runtime is installed. So that's going to be if there happens to be something on your computer that needs to be installed. Uh, so like this is um, uh, some application scripts. Go ahead and install those if necessary. So go ahead and do that. So nice and easy, just like installing anything else on Windows. And then we're going to do the same exact process for page edit. And then once that's uh, done, then we'll be able to link those together. Looks like I do have ebooks over here, so I'll just be able to open up some ebooks I have instead of showing you guys with blank pages there. All right, so no, I do not need to restart the computer right now. Now we're going to do the same exact process for page edit. Again, written by the same organization. This is just one of the uh, one of the applications that you can install to run an ex an external editor for your book. Basically, what you see, what you get, editor. So we'll go ahead and create the desktop icon. Why not? And 
let this do its thing. All right, so that's done. Now we may not have to update or uh, reboot the system. I'm just gonna go ahead and try it without rebooting the system. And uh, we'll boot up Sigil and see if that's going to run. And there we have it. So if we head on over now to our preferences. Um, now this might actually be auto populated because I actually had this installed on this computer prior. I uninstalled it to show you the tutorial. Uh, in the event it's blank for you and it probably will be, just go ahead and hit your browse, find your page edit and find your page edit application. That's all it's gonna take. All right, so there you have it. You should be all set to go. Let's go ahead and open up um, Go ahead and open up this book here in Sigil. I'll show you how this is going to work. So here is my cover, title pages, text pages, things like that. And now if I hit my external editor, it's going to open this guy up in my page edit. And then now with page edit, I can come in here and I can add any, whoa, add any other text that I want and save it and that will auto populate it back down to my code inside the book. So there's how you can do that in Windows. All right, so here we are on the Mac and we're going to once again download the Sigil ebook and page edit. So on a Mac, the the install file is going to be a uh, DMG file, I believe, but it is extracted in a uh, in a certain file format that uh, we'll go ahead and show you how to extract on default on a Mac, although there's other ways to do it as well. But uh, since I don't use Mac a whole lot, I don't have a lot of software on this particular computer. It's mostly just used for testing software. So uh, I'll just go ahead and show you how to do it the Linux slash Unix way. So the first is we want to go down to um, the page to download the Mac file for both Sigil and Page Edit. So we're going to open up these two pages here. So 1.3 is going to need a newer version of Mac. I originally tested this out on Yosemite, which is what this vert Mac did have. That's still a little bit too old of a version. I updated up to um, Sierra in this, so I'm now running Mac Sierra. And uh, if you head on down here, you can see that we have the Sigil app 1.3, and it's a Mac.txz file. So we're gonna go ahead and download this guy here, and that's going to download. And then we're gonna grab the same file for page edit as well. So what we're going to see is we're going to take just a second here to download. I have all my downloads automatically coming up on the desktop here. That's kind of my preference, how I run my system. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and work with these two files. Now, like I said, if you're using a Mac a lot, you probably already have some type of a file extractor on your system. And if you do that can unzip a TXZ file, go ahead and use that. If you don't and uh, you just don't know where to go, you can actually go into the terminal. And the terminal is basically a, a Unix terminal. You can easily get to extracting your file here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and change my directory to the desktop. And if I look at my listery, listing directory here, you see that I have the Sigil app and I have the page edit app here. So what we're going to do is we are going to use tar and we're going to do tar tar.x which stands for extract. V is for verbose, so it's going to give us a readout while it's working. Z is going to be the G unzip um, application and then F is going to be the individual file we're calling for. So first we're going to do sigil. We might be able to do them both at the same time, but we're going to go ahead and uh, let this guy run here, see what it does. All right, so that is extracted and it looks as though it's a standard application now. So let's go ahead and uh, do the same for page edit now. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's your page edit. It's going to extract the same file in the same manner. And this is how we can extract this type of file without having to download any extra software. All right, so we'll go ahead and close this terminal down. Now we're left with these applications. So if we open these guys up, it should actually open up Sigil. If you want to, you probably should if you're using it on a regular basis. 
um, then you should actually drop it into your applications. Now, the first time I'm running this, it's probably going to give us an, an warning about it. You download it from the internet. Do you really want to open it? And the answer is yes. This is a reputable uh, organization. They just haven't gone through Apple's stuff to put it on their system. Now, is this going to be something you can do in the long term? Honestly, I don't know the direction Mac is going. That's why I like to use Linux. All right, so over here we've opened up Sigil, and uh, we have inside of here is our, our location. Let's go ahead and uh, what we're going to do before we do anything else is Let's go into our finder. We'll open up our applications and we're going to go ahead and just drop these two guys into our applications so that they're more permanently on our system and not on our desktop. So now you should be able to access them from over here. So here's Sigil. We'll go ahead and open this guy back up. Uh oh, the disk it is on has been ejected. Uh oh, we need to figure that one out. Let's go ahead and quit that. I think that's because it was already opened. There we are. <laughs> Make sure you close it if you're going to move the application. Ha <laughs> you got to do that, right? So let's go down into our uh, file. Um, let's see, where's it at? I don't remember where it is on Mac. Oh, I think I'm over here now. <laughs> Mac puts it under the side, the, the main Sajil menu. We're pulling up our preferences. And remember, under our general settings, we need to browse for our preferred X HTML editor. So we're going to go into our applications folder and find page edit inside of here. So here's your page edit hit open, push OK, and now when we open up this guy, it's going to open up page edit from within Sigil, so now you can make your adjustments in the same way that we do on uh, Linux or on Mac. So do you want to download it? This, this should really only do this the very first time you open it uh, because it's there. And by the way, I should mention too that uh, by default, Mac does not even allow you to open things up from the internet without that prompt. Um, we'll go ahead and show you how to fix that if uh, you run into that issue. This is page edit inside of Sigil. And hit your save, and then you have to hit your save to send the information on back. And there it is. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, show you how you can enable uh, in the event that you do need to add that extra software head on over to your system preferences and then we're going to head up to privacy and security or security and privacy rather and then what you need to do down here is we need to change this guy here from app store to app store and identified developers you need to click on this guy here enter in your password for your computer and then you can toggle the button around. So you want to go App Store and Identified Developers. If it's not an Identified Developer, I think in this version of Mac, it doesn't allow you to, to run it at all, I think. But again, I'm not a regular Mac user, so I can't tell you for sure. But anyway, there's how you can get Sigil installed and connected to PageEdit on your Mac so you can be editing your eBooks on your Mac. So we're on Linux Mint now. This is obviously not my usual computer. I wanted to use a fresh computer that didn't already have things installed. I'm using Linux Mint 20 right here, and we are going to install Sigil in PageEdit, and then we are going to link these two together. So the downside on the Linux side is that there are a lot of ways to install software depending on which version you're using. If you are new to Linux, you're just experimenting things, you're looking for which distribution, definitely go check out my channel, Switched to Linux, where I cover a lot more tutorials and other things like that. Uh, but I do recommend using Linux Mint if you're new to the Linux world and just needing a Linux-based system to get started with. And this is the latest version, and so this is going to be applicable to this. Now, if you're used to Linux, just however you install software on your computer, you're going to need the Sigil program, you're going to need the PageEdit program. The Sigil program is going to be inside of most of your... Uh, software managers. So we're just going to go into our software manager in this case and search for Sigil. And this is pretty much going to be in every Linux repository. Now in the more recent versions, the last maybe year or so, the there is no longer a uh, what you see is what you get editor inside of Sigil. So if we boot up Sigil, 
And this is going to be different than the computer that I actually use for developing my things. This button here is the uh, is the editor that you will use to make any edits onto your books. You can see that it says there's no external editor has been specified. See preferences. So what this means is that uh, what you need to do is you need to define what goes into that section. And so what we need to do is we need to go in and set an external editor. Why did they do this? Well, according to the documentation with Sigil, there were problems with how the internal what you see, what you get editor worked, and I've experienced some of those myself. So they wanted to open this up, and in so opening it up, they allowed you to use any external XHTML editor. So in theory, I should set something like Bluefish to this, and that would probably work as well. Who knows? Uh, but regardless, what we're going to do is we're going to use Page Edit, which is the one that they are developing. So let's go ahead and close down Sigil for now. So if you head on over to their Sigil Page Edit page, uh, this is the Sigil ebook, and Page Editor is their external one that that uh, they're developing, which works out fairly well. So down here, it kind of walks through building on Mac OS. We'll do Mac OS in a different section. Uh, but over here on Linux, first thing you need to have installed is you need to have Git installed. So if you don't know if you have Git installed, just try and install it. In this case on Linux Mint, anything based on Debian, uh, sudo apt install git. I already installed it uh, today, so whoa. I do have to type install, not east. There we go. It tells you it's already the latest version. Now, on Linux Mint, Git is not installed by default, so you're probably going to have to run that step. Now, once that's over, we have to follow our steps to install it. They do give us steps for Ubuntu, Arch, and looks like that might be it. So there's going to be other ways to install it on other systems. Uh, if you're not using an Arch or an Ubuntu-based system, and this should also work for any Debian-based system as well, uh, if that's not the case, then um, you're going to have to hunt down how to install the software. Once you have it installed, linking it is going to be the same. Now, a secondary note as we go through this is that it is never wise to copy and paste commands from your terminal into uh, into running them without understanding what you're doing. Now, in this case here, we're using a reputable company, a, a reputable group directly from their GitHub page. It's going to be safe, but we're going to walk you through what we're going to do. So Git here, what this is going to do is it's going to go onto the GitHub page for the source code, and it's going to download a copy of that source code onto your computer. So it's going ahead and downloading this. Now, CD page edit simply goes into the directory where that uh, those files were downloaded too. So basically just makes a copy of it inside of, it should be inside of your home directory. So if I boot up a file folder here, it's page edit. It's right here. So that's what we did. And then now we just went into here. So now we are going to install build essential. So install build essential, install CMake and install uh, Qt web being uh, five dash dev Qtools 5-dev. What you're doing here in these three steps is you are installing some basic applications required to build any program from a source code. So these are all fairly standard. Now the first two are going to be to build nearly anything from source code. The last ones are specific Qt tools which PageEdit is based on. So we're going to paste this guy in. First one is to install our uh, build essentials which again is not going to be installed by default. Second one is we're going to install CMake, which is the application we're going to use to uh, make and process the files. And then the third one is just a few different Qt applications. So we're going to come on over here, paste in that one. Whoa, I hopefully I hit yes on that. I actually hit the enter key twice. And then we're going to grab this guy here. Okay, so our next step is going to be, uh, what we're going to do is MKDIR means we're making a directory inside of our page edits folder called build. So I'm going to show you what that's going to look like over here on this. So we're inside of our page edit. See, there's nothing called build. We're going to come in here. Whoa, wrong button. There we are. <laughs> 
apologies. Now you can see there's a folder here called build. CD build is just going to go right inside this directory. So we're going to go CD build right in that just drops us right inside that directory. And then CMake, this is where we are going to, uh, we are actually going to create our, uh, our files here. Okay, so uh, if you just copy and paste this guy in, it says path two. This is their computer lingo code to say, hey, you need to go into whatever directory that is. So if we look at our build, we're going to go back one direction. So we should just be um, backing up one directory back and hitting enter, and that should be enough to find it. So it says it is done, and now we're going to hit the file called make. So now it's going to be building our application. And when it's done building our application, then we should have page edit installed on our system. All right, so I rebooted the computer just because I like to do that whenever I'm doing any, uh, any big uh, applications or anything. So if we go under page edit, build, and bin, this should be our application. Now, we can't really do anything with it right here because it's going to be expecting a file whenever it's opened. But what we're going to do is now we are going to open up Sigil. And inside of Sigil, we are going to set this in our preferences as our default editor. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. Let's go ahead and head on over to preferences. And then down here, we're going to browse for our file. And remember, this is going to be in our basic page edit, build, bin, and page edit. So hit OK on that. Let's go ahead and just restart Sigil just in case it needs to be reset to load that in. And now when I hit my external editor, it will open up our file over here. This is my new what you see is what you get editor. All right. So anytime that we make any changes there, you can see it's going to automatically populate into the code over inside of Sigil. So that's all it's going to take to get this guy running on Linux.